Hello, my name is Kyle Brandt, and I'm an original co-author of the Boson Monitoring System. Boson is an open source monitoring system created at Stack Overflow. This is a second video in a series of instructional videos on Boson, and it covers the fundamentals of Boson's expression language. The expression language is what enables you to transform and combine time series into precise alerting conditions. The first aspect of Boson's expression language we're going to talk about are its data types. Boson has three different data types in its expression language. There's a series set. A series set is a set of time series. Each time series within the set is identified by its tag set, which we also refer to as its group. So we have our tag set, state equals New York, our NY, and then we have date times, our timestamps, and values associated with them, and there's a series of them. So this is our time series. And then again, we have another one, state equals Florida. That's our tag set. And remember, tag sets are tag keys and value pairs. So this whole thing is our series set. And then we have items within the series set, each identified by its tag set. The second type is a number set, which is very similar. A number set is a set of single numbers. Each number within the set is also identified by its tag set. So we have our tag set, state equals NY, but we just have a number, 8.5. There's no timestamp associated with it, and there's only a single number, not a series of values. We have the same thing for Florida, and this whole thing is the number set, and we have items within the set, just like a series set. The last data type is a scalar, and a scalar is a single number constant. It's not part of a set, and it has no tag set associated with it. So it's just a single number like 12. So here on Boson's graphing page, uh, there's a shortcut to the expression page, which lets us play with expressions. We can see that our graph generates a query function right here, and then there's a link to the expression page, which is going to insert that query function for us up here. So this is the result of the query function. This whole thing is our set. Um, so this is a tag set, or group, as we call them as well. And when we expand the value of one of these items in the set, we can see it's a time series. So we have a Unix timestamp, which is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970, and then a value, and there's a series of them. So this is a time series, and this is an item in, in the set. So this is a set-based language, and there's a couple levels going on here. We have the whole set, and then with each set, we have items, and then the item has a value, which can be a series. We can also wrap our query function, which returns a series set, in a reduction function. I'll talk about functions in the next slide some more. But when we wrap it in a reduction function, we get a number set result. So this whole thing is a number set. And we have, again, groups, identifiers of each set item, which is a tag set. Host is the tag key, and then CO. TSTBO2 is the tag value, and the result, the value for this particular item in the set, is just a single number. So this is why it's a number set versus a series of set where each value is a time series. We just saw some functions. Boson currently has four categories of functions. There's query functions, reduction functions, group functions, and other. In this video, we're only going to talk about query functions and reduction functions. The group and other functions are for more advanced functionality. Query functions query Boson supported time series databases. Currently, OpenTSDB, Elasticsearch populated by Logstash, and Grafana are supported, and you can use them simultaneously. Here's one of OpenTSDB's query function signature. So it takes a query string, which is what OpenTSDB would take, a start duration, and an end duration. Uh, everything is perceived from now, so the start duration would be like 10 minutes from now, and the end duration might be 5 minutes from now. And it's going to return a series set. So here's an example query where we have the sum aggregator, it's a rate, and we're querying the Linux.net bytes metric with host equals star, which is going to give us um, everything aggregated by host in sum. And we query from one hour ago till now, because when it's blank, that's regarded as now. Reduction functions take a series set and reduces the values of each item in the series to a single number, returning a number set. So average is an example reduction function. Um, they always take a series set and return a number set. There are other ones, such as 
min, median, max, percentile, uh, the first value, the last value, and things like this. Um, so for example, we would just take our previous query function, which returned a series set, and wrap it in our reduction function average. So what this looks like is we have our series set with two items in here, each item identified by its tag set. Um, and then we run it through our average reduction function. And then for each item in the set, we get the average of the values. And what that gives us is a number set. Another way besides functions to manipulate our data is operators. The expression language has three categories of operators. There's arithmetic, relational, and logical. The arithmetic operators perform math functions, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication. These are useful for transforming metrics values. There's also relational operators, and they're used for comparison, it includes things like less than or greater than, equals to. Finally, there's logical operators. The logical operators end, or, and not are useful for creating conditionals. For example, you might want to say this and not this. In Boson, zero is false, and any non-zero number is true. This is true of both the logical operators and whether or not an alert triggers, which is something we'll get into later. At least one side of binary operators, which are operators that have both left and right side elements, must be a scalar or a number set. This means that if you have series set operator series set, that's not supported and will raise an error in Boson. So you can only have something like series set operator scalar or number set operator scalar or the left and right side of the operator can be switched the order it doesn't matter so looking at how operators work with scalars and sets we have a number set here so we have our set and then we have items in the set and in each item is identified by a tag set and there's a single value that's what makes it a number set so we use the addition operator and the scalar, our constant number five, and what that gives us is a new number set. And that number set has still the same number of items in the set, but five, the scalar, has been added to each value in the set. We can look at this for a series set, too. So a series set is a set of time series, and each time series is identified by its tag set and there's multiple values in a time series. So we apply the addition operator to that, and again, the scalar constant number five, and what that gives us in this case is a series set. So we've taken the series set and each item in the series set, and then taken all of its values and added five to each individual value. So what this looks like in pseudocode would be to create a new set, and then we iterate over each item in the set, and then for each value in each item, we add the scalar value to that. So that would work for a number set where you only have one value, or that would also work for a series set where you have multiple values. So we can look at operators and scalars with number sets and series sets at work in Boson. So here we have a query function that was wrapped in the reduction function average, which is going to give us a number set. So we have our tags and then a single number with each, each tag, and that's a number set, the whole thing. So we can take this and divide it by 2, and then we get each value divided by 2 here, and we get another number set. So if we get rid of the reduction function, then we're going to get a query, then we're going to get a just a query function which will return a series set, and we can divide that by 2, and what's happening here is each value is getting divided by 2 in the series set for every single item in the series set. So you can also use operators when you have sets on both sides of the operator. The same rules apply. You can have a number set and a series set, or a number set and a number set, but you cannot have a series set and a series set. So when sets make up each side of an operator, we join items in the set if the tag set for an item is equal to or a subset of the other set. So this is kind of a mouthful, so let's look at some examples, first ones that will work. You can have host equals foo and host equals foo because those are equal tag sets. You can have host equals foo, iface equals em1 is one tag set, and then host equals foo is the other tag set. They would be joined because host equals foo is a subset of host equals foo and iface equals em1. You can also have the empty tag set because that's still a tag set and is the subset of other tag sets. So all tag sets, um, the empty, tag set will be a subset or equal to that. 
So for things that will not work, you can't have host equals foo be joined with host equals bar because the tag values are different. You can't have host equals foo iface equals em1 be joined with host equals foo iface em2 because those iface values are different. You also can't have something like host alias equals foo and host equals foo because the tag keys are different. It is worth noting we do have functions to manipulate groups and rename tag keys, etc. So there are ways to join things when the data isn't already in the form you need. So in Boson's expression page, we can start to tie all these concepts together. We're also using variables here, which are just text replacement. So I have i bytes for interface bytes, and this is bytes per second. We have the Linux dot, dot, dot bytes metric, and we're taking a counter to get it per second. And since we didn't specify the direction, we're just getting host and interface, we're going to have some aggregation going on. We can also get the interface speed, which is just linux.net.if speed, and we're doing these both over the last 30 minutes. So now we can start to do some reduction and manipulation. So first we can reduce interface bytes using something like the percentile reduction function, where we take our i bytes variable, which again is representing the series set that gets returned for bytes per second, and take the 95th percentile of that. The next thing we can do is get the speed, and if we, since that isn't really going to be changing, we can just take the very last um, value in that by using the last function. Um, and our speed is in megabits per second, where our rate is in bytes per second. So we want to manipulate this. So we can turn megabits into bits by multiplying it by 1 million, which is one with six zeros by it. And then we can turn the bits into bytes by dividing it by eight. Finally, we might want a percentile of this. So we could do something like if our bytes it divided by the speed, um, which is going to give us a percent, and we multiply that by 100, to get a percent that's you know not offset by two decimal places and we can say is that greater than say 10 percent and when we do that we get the result here and we get our computations would break this down for us we can see we have our query function here in the percentile we're getting the 95th then we're taking that speed and and multiplying it by 1 million to turn it into giga, or bits rather, and then we divide by 8 to get bytes, and then we can again, we just continue doing our manipulations, and the last manipulation here is, is it greater than 10, which is not, so we get 0. If it was greater than, than 10, we would get 1. Those are how um, bool operators return results. And we have a whole set here, so it's it's lining these up, and it's finding, even though these are different metrics, it's recognizing that the host equals COTSDBO2 and the interface equals EM1, and it's joining those together. And then finally, now that we have something ready, we can click on the rule, which is going to take us to the rule page, and it's going to show us, it's going to get us started here and making an alert with a critical definition and a test template and this is what we'll start to get into in the next presentation. So to review we covered data types. We learned there was a series set which is a set of time series. Each item in the set is identified by a tag set. There's also a number set and a number set is single numbers also identified by tag sets. And then finally, there's a scalar, which is just a single number constant that's not a set and has no identifier. We learned about functions, and there's query functions with which query time series databases. In general, they will return a series, but there are some functions that return uh, number sets as well. There's reduction functions, which take a series set and turn it to a number set using things like average, min, or max. And we also mentioned there are group manipulation and other functions, which we didn't get into, but you should be aware that they exist. We talked about operators. There's arithmetic operators, relational operators, and logical operators. And we saw how to join those with scalars. And then we also got into set joins. And we learned the type rules that you can't do a series set and series set join, but you can do number set and series set or number set and number set. And we also learned how tags need to be equal or a subset of the other in order to get a join.